Now, the Competition Commission has recommended the provisional approval of the proposed merger between uh, South African Airways and Takatso Aviation. We heard this earlier this afternoon. Uh, the Takatso Consortium Agreement was announced, you'll remember, by uh, Public Enterprises Minister Praveen Gordon back in 2021. The indication was that Takatso would buy 51% of SAA. Uh, SAA going into business rescue in 2019. It was declared uh, insolvent in uh, 2021. But to tell us more about where we are from Takatso's point of view, Tula Sizwe Semelani, a former colleague of mine, but now a spokesperson for Takatso. First time I'm it's speaking good to, to be you back, you <laughs> in this capacity. <laughs> All right, it's been a long, and perhaps we can also say a very delayed journey, this one, hasn't it, Tula? Yeah. So, I mean, just remind us how we got here to the Competition Commission, because as I understand it, and as you said before, what we needed was a stamp that the entity emerging out of this deal was not anti-competitive. Yeah, country. absolutely. You know how these things work. It's a matter of competition law, yeah. uh, Devon, such that uh, the Competition Commission and the Tribunal are part of the mechanisms that seek to ensure that there's efficiency in our economy. Uh, there's competition in our economy that consumers get um, you know, uh, bang for their buck, uh, for a lack of a better word. So we submitted this uh, proposal up almost a year ago, actually. It's been almost a year. It's a part of the investigations that the Competition Commission carries out on large mergers, on mergers, mm. and, and, and this was a large merger. And therefore, it was complex. There was a lot of back and forth. Uh, we certainly uh, were responding. We responded to all of their requests for information. We participated very constructively and there were a number of instances where, where they expressed concerns, including the concern that has led them to where they are today. Yeah. And we had uh, specific constructive uh, solutions that we proposed to them. But uh, I must say that uh, in this instance, the one key recommendation that we had, a proposal uh, around uh, mitigating the concerns around information sharing mm. and the confidentiality issues. Uh, it's been implemented uh, by the Commission, it's been accepted by the Commission uh, in, the, in the case of other transactions in the past, but this time around uh, they didn't accept it. Okay, so let's talk about one of those conditions, right? I mean the highlighted one. Tell us more about it, what you understand, global aviation, Majority, uh, minority shareholder of Takatso, so is Serenix. What the Competition Commission is saying this afternoon is that, look, you've got conditional approval, but those two entities need to divest at the time of merger. Yeah. So how does that work? So we are noting that, uh, that condition, yeah. and naturally, Devon, uh, not much water has passed under the bridge for us to have formed a concrete view of how uh, this is taken forward. Mm. Uh, until now, we couldn't engage substanti substantively among the shareholders of Takatso uh, because we simply didn't have a competition commission um, recommendation that was final before us. Now that we have it, that engagement can in earnest uh, take place. Um, but our uh, minority shareholders are aware of this uh, condition being uh, proposed by the uh, Competition Commission. In terms of what happens going forward, yeah. um, that, that engagement gets underway in earnest. But part of what this does, Devon, is um, emphasize and vindicate some of the precautions and measures that Takazo took quite early on uh, to the frustration of many people uh, who were suggesting that there's a sense in which we are closing out some of our minority shareholders. But you initiated sharing. this, didn't you? This was based yeah. on these concerns, and this is where we are. The Competition Commission shares those concerns. Now, let's talk about the majority shareholder, because a lot of questions around where, whether or not, if we're going forward, and we understand there's going to be some time taken to sort out those minority shareholders yes. and what we'll do going forward, but I just wanted to step out of that for a moment. Harrod, Takatsu's majority shareholder, a lot of questions in, in recent times about whether or not it can come up with that three billion rand capital. Where are we with that? I must say, Devin, it's, it's a mind-boggling question. Mm. Every time I hear it, it, it's baffling. The only explanation I can have is that perhaps it's, it's a lack of appreciation of what Takatsu's majority shareholder does right. uh, and some of the work that you know, it has undertaken. You're talking here about a company that has implemented... Uh, infrastructure projects that have changed the face of Africa. We can boldly say this. We're talking touch and feel 
uh, infrastructure across the African continent mm. uh, that, you know, complex deals, transactions that were complex. And that's why even this whole sense of complexity, you know, some of the team members that I'm working with in Takazo yep. are not phased by it because they have that experience. So what am I saying? Uh, Harris, with all of that experience, uh, over one billion U.S. dollars assets under management, having been able to unlock value of four billion U.S. dollars across the continent with these uh, these uh, investments, these infrastructure projects, and the ability to close uh, deals that are complex, we are certain that. Um, the issue of the three billion rand really is something that uh, can be achieved. We are already, that work had already started. They required approvals, uh, mm -hmm. governance approvals within Takazo had already been concluded and the work is actually at an advanced stage. So every time we hear that we, we won't have the three billion rand, and by the way, very quickly, I'm sorry. Yeah. And I always have to say this because you then hear this uh, narrative that says some of this money will come from the PIC because they are shareholders in Harris. Categorically, each and every opportunity I get, I emphasize that zero rand of that three billion rand, three billion rand will come, will from, come the from the PIC. All right, so ideally, when this was first announced, I mean, a couple of years back, 51% Takatso, 49% DPE, Department of Public Enterprises. Everything that's happened and that's going to happen with these negotiations after the Commission's uh, conditional approval, how long does it take? when these two entities in those percentage yeah. capacities really start operating? Look, we are itching to go. Yeah. Uh, we are itching to take to the skies, as I look at that, uh, you know, that picture of the aeroplane behind you. Where we take to the skies in the sense of you know, with this transaction and, and uh, the business plan and the plans that we have uh, that will actually unlock value for uh, the South African public, will add uh, you know, to the commercial viability of SAA on a sustainable basis. But we are realistic. It is a process. So we've now cleared competition commission uh, merger clearance. But as you and I know, we now go to the tribunal, which is another process. Uh, a lot of it is not within our control. But if we had it our way, uh, we would be at a point where we are displaying what we are yep. talking about when we say that we will actually add value uh, to the South African fiscus and the South African economy. All right. No doubt we're going to chat about this when a new development does happen. Tula Cizwe Similan, the spokesperson of Takatso. Thanks Thank for coming in. Thank you for chatting to us.